what's going on, what's going on, people? I'm going I'm to wait a little bit um, for people to come on. But we got two very, 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 very important things to talk about right here and what's going on in the MTA and, and, and our union. I need some people to come on um, first. If you're watching this, please share it out. This is very important. This has everything to do with our jobs. This has everything to do with um, how um, a manager got caught doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. And this is very, very, very important because we don't want the MTA to sweep this up under the rug. So add people to it. I'm going to start in a couple of minutes. Trust me, guys, this is very, very important. Very important. Two, two very important things that's going to affect everyone. If you work for the MTA, this is going to affect you. So I advise you to um, share out this live. I advise you to pay sh complete attention um, to what's going on, to what I have to say. I don't even know what should I talk about first. Should I talk about the union thing or should I talk about the MTA thing or should I talk about the corrupt manager first? But I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a few more, like another minute. Share out this live. Trust me, guys, please share out this live. Please share out this live. Trust me when I tell you the, the what I just seen today is very, very, very alarming. This has everything to do with layoffs. This has everything to do with wages, pensions, us having a job, period. I advise you guys to share out this live. Share it out myself. But yo, look, check it out. I'm gonna start off with I'm gonna start off with the MTA news first before I get into the manager stuff, because the manager stuff is completely crazy. But we got a manager red-handed doing something crazy. But first we're gonna get into our jobs. I tell you guys time and time again, please pay attention to the MTA board meetings. The MTA board meetings are so vital to what our jobs. You got to hear what some of these people are talking. So as we know, we are in the in the middle of this pandemic. A sec, everyone's saying a second wave is coming within a month or two. And the MTA has decided and they're, they're planning on permanently freezing our wages if they don't get $12 billion from um, the federal government. Listen to, listen to what I'm saying. The MTA plan on permanently freezing our wages. They got two tracks. They got permanently freezing it and they got postponing it. But they are looking to permanently freeze our wages. What that mean? That we won't get a raise. It's bad enough that we can't afford to live in a city in which we work with the, with the minimal raises that they give us now. The MTA is planning on taking away our raises. They plan on opening up the contract outside of the contract and getting rid of our wages out of everything out of all the sacrificing we have we did for this this company before covid the sacrificing that we doing now during covid they saying that they go take away our raises and what you tano is worried about go look on a union twitter page go look on a union website he's just talking about finding People who don't have on mask. You want to know what? The MTA taking away our raises is way more worse than people not wearing masks. 
the MTA is talking about deferring the payment for the pensions. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. The MTA is talking about deferring our pension, the payment for our pensions. The MTA is talking about getting rid of our, our health benefits when we retire. This is all a setup to it. They want to defer the pension payments, even though it say they got to pay it back. But this is the door to open up for them to get rid of our pensions. Governor Cuomo have the ability to do that. And they talking about freezing the, the retirees' health care, future retirees. That means that if, you, if you're going to retire within the next five, anything five years and above, you may not have no health insurance when you retire. But first and foremost, they are talking about permanently freezing our wages. When I do my regular progressive action show, I'm going to show you guys. But they are talking about permanently freezing our wages. And Utano is not saying nothing about that. He's not saying nothing about that. How, how you asking us? We they, they try on the backs of us, on the backs of us transit workers. They want to save money. We done sacrificed enough. But this is what this company think and say about and this. Is, they don't care. They don't care if you get sick. They don't care if you die. They don't care if we if we don't if we can't make enough money to survive in this city. They want to take our raises away from us. Something that we bargained for. Retirees. You may not have no health benefits moving forward. They want to take that away too. And they playing around with our pensions. It don't get no more serious than that. And look at what Tony Utano is doing. He's talking about a hundred dollar fine for people with no mask. No, we want to hear you talk about them talking about having a, the MTA making us open up our books and take away our raises. We want to talk about them messing with the retirees' health benefits and our pensions. It's bad enough us tier six workers. We are not going to be able to survive under the tier six plan right now in the next, in 2037, when we first go be able to retire off of tier six. We're not going to be able to survive. And you want to know what? I don't care if you tier six. I don't care if you tier four. I don't care what tier you are from. Without health benefits, you're not going to be able to survive. And the MTA is tapping into that to help them save money because they using us, the people who make this system run every single day. They using us as pawns and trying to get that, that money off the backs of us instead of holding Washington accountable, instead of holding Cuomo accountable. And, 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 and Utano is allowing it to go down. We, we, do y'all want to give up y'all raises? They said it at the MTA board today. Two tracks. Freezing our raises for a few years or permanently getting rid of the raises. That's what they said for the next, for the next, I think like the 2025 or 2024 or something like that. No raises for us. And Utano is not saying nothing. Now, um, in other... And other news. This is very important because we all know how this this company is when it comes to disciplining us um, workers. You guys need to pay attention to this. And and I'm not go I'm not go talk specifics too much about who or or what exactly happened or whatever. The, I guess I could say what happened. But back in September. There was a derailment on the F train. No four of the train operator. I, 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 rem I don't know if y'all remember this. It was a black mat laid on a third rail protection board. There was no flag and there was no nothing out there. Um, it was left there. A black mat left in a dark tunnel. You're not going to see that if, if you're going 
if you're, if you're moving your train. You're just not going to see it. And if you see it, you're not going to stop your train in time. You go get the same result. To make a long story short, and for those who don't know, when you get into any type of major accident here, you got to go see system safety. And system safety, they just there to get the interview. Well, you have two particular guys in system safety where they think that they are cops. They think that transit workers um, are criminals. They think that their room that they interview us in is an interrogation room. So with this, this, this guy interviewed the train operator who had the accident. Now, mind you, someone had a derailment. This person probably was shook up, um, scared, nervous for his life. A derailment is a serious thing. It's not nothing. It's not nothing to play with. It's not nothing to frown at. I mean, it's not. It's not nothing to smile at. It's a, it's a very serious thing, right? The same way how the MTA hit you, gets you for hitting a signal where there's no damage. They treat it as the most egregious thing. Um, a derailment is very egregious. It's, 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 I can imagine what someone to go through, you know, experiencing that. So this train operator had to go down there twice. Now the first twice back to back. So the, the, the first time he went down there, he, um, had a, had a little negative experience with how they, how they was talking and treating, treating them. So the second time he decided to go down there, it was recorded this time. And what did the managers do down there? They threatened him. They, they spoke to him in a very hostile demeanor. Like I said, all of this is on video. And this happened back last September. I didn't know the train operator. The train operator came to me a couple of weeks ago and was like, I need you to help me. I don't trust no one. I don't trust nobody else. I want you to help me, Tramel. And I'm like, all right, let, let's see what you got here. When I heard when I heard this video, I was shocked and appalled at how management was talking to him like he he was a criminal. Management was saying things like, "Go play with your kids, don't play with me," and it's, it, it, it's I'm paraphrasing. Management was saying, "Don't you know that you're on probation, which is a threat? What does probation got to do with anything?" Management told him, "I'm paraphrasing." Ma management told him, "When when when." When I talk, you look at me. What do they think that this is? Now, what happened, I'm going to fast forward it to, 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 to the present time. I sent the email to um, Kim Moore Ward, who's the vice president of labor relations. Now, I'm going to say this about Kim Moore Ward. She, she's, a, she's a black woman. She comes from a law. She's a lawyer. She went to Brooklyn Law School. Brooklyn Law School is the school I'm about to go to for law. Don't tell nobody, though. But um, she went to Brooklyn Law School, and I think the first time that I met her or said anything to her, um, she kind of like gave me a vibe like her nose was in the air. I'm just gonna say it like that. I have nothing against this 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 lady, right? Now there was an incident that had happened maybe a month ago, and I had emailed. Um, I emailed all the bosses, Kim Moore Ward, Sarah Feinberg, Pat Ford, all the bosses I had emailed. Kim Moore Ward, what she did was she erroneously sent the email to everyone, Feinberg, Foy, everyone. Like she wasn't thinking, right? She forgot I was attached to the email. She said in the email, who's going to be the one to tell him that he's not elected and we can't talk to him, which is a lie. But I, 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 I found that strange that out of everyone I emailed, the black person was the one to try to show that she go stand up to me. It was the it was the black, the black person who was on some tip like I'm a, I, I'm not afraid of him. I'm going to show you guys how it's done. But she erroneously sent me the email. So fast forward to the train operator um situation. I emailed her. She um 
she responded back and tried to immediately X me out the equation. Speak to the train operator. So the train operator spoke to her. I don't know exactly when, but he spoke to her on the phone. Probably like the day before yesterday or two, three days ago, whatever the case is. And um, he he's trying to work something out with them. Because he about to come back to work in September, but he's afraid he was retaliated. He's afraid that he's going to be retaliated against after all this stuff. So she mentioned to him to the some to the effect that first of all, she can't he I can't advocate for him. That's that's number one. I cannot advocate for a member of this union. Since when? That seems very discriminatory to me. But we we're gonna handle that. When it when it comes. But the important part is that she told the train operator that he has discipline waiting for him when he comes back. So he told her how do how do how like how can he have discipline or something like that? And and he was cleared of the derailment. Come to find out. His record was pulled. And. The train operator. Was brought up on charges. Of. Falsifying a report. And conduct unbecoming. How can he get. Uh, for, falsify, falsifying a report when he was cleared of the incident. How can you falsify a report and be cleared of an incident? And conduct unbecoming. Everyone know that's a broad charge that the MTA put on you and basically anything, anything could be conduct unbecoming. Let's remember during the video, and I got the video, I got I got the entire video, and, and, and management, I know that you're watching. Guess what? You're not going to get the entire video unless I'm there advocating for it. You're not going to get the entire video. That's just not going to happen because you guys are on the wrong. Um, but when the when when the um, when the hearing officer at system safety told him that basically don't play with me go play with your kids and the train operator was like why are you talking to me like that the hearing officer just started acting belligerent so in retaliation guess what he did he wrote the train operator up and said the train operator falsified a report and conduct unbecoming but the train operator told me when he was on the phone with Kim Moore Ward, it was something about failure to comply or some craziness like that. One thing that the manager failed or didn't know at the time was that he was being recorded. And when you listen to the whole entire recording, you will see that the train operator was compliant the whole entire time during this investigation. The hearing officer, management, the manager involved, both is two managers. I'm not going to say their names today. I'm going to say it on the actual show. They were the ones who are hostile. They were the ones who didn't want to answer questions. They were the ones who were threatening. So... Management wrote him up out of retaliation. And they did it with impunity because they didn't know that there was a video involved. I'm so proud of this train operator. I'm so proud of him for the simple fact that he was smart enough to, to, to obtain a video of the situation. Without him knowing that 
he would probably be written up because of a gun hole, big stick manager. And we all know, and, and check this out. Check this out. Guess what? Guess for failure to comply and conduct unbecoming of an incident that he was found innocent of, guess what the write-up was for? Guess what they want? They want dismissal. <clears throat> Management is asking for dismissal. Like I said, they didn't know that there was a recording and this recording is going to make a lot of people upset and mad. It's going to make a lot of people upset and mad because I told management before that you guys target employees. When I got written up, I was targeted, targeted by management. Management act like that this does not exist. And it exists all throughout this system. If a manager don't like you, then guess what? You're going to be written up. Now, for Kim Moore Ward, I am very disappointed in you. Very disappointed. Because I really thought when you came on board to this agency that you would have wanted to clean some things up. But to me, it seems as if you're upholding the status quo harder and higher than the people who the status quo or the people who is benefiting from being a part of the status quo. I'm highly disappointed in you, Miss Ward. And not to mention, we have another video of incompetence we have paperwork of a whole nother situation we have another video and paperwork of more incompetence of how you guys purposely hold dance of supervisors and managers to make them untimely in labor relations i have the proof I have the videos. So all of this stuff that I've, I've been waiting for this because what I've been trying to do was have dialogue with manage, management regarding certain situations and to try to keep things in house. But management wants to deal. They make up their own rules as they go along. Oh, um, we can't speak to you because you're not elected. And if Tony Utano or Eric Logel told you that, they're not the ones that's going to be paying for the lawsuits that's to come. You understand that? Because, you know, sir, the vice president or the president of the union could say, hey, don't talk to this guy. But not talking to me, it's going to get you nowhere but embarrassment. But like I said, under Kim Moore Ward, I have another incident of incompetence. Purposely. See, when the rank and file get in trouble, our dance is issued to us immediately. I mean, she was on the phone with the train operator and she told him that he has Dan, he has a Dan waiting for him when he comes back. But like I said, I have a video of a supervisor and managers doing something. And, 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 and everyone knows who worked for New York City Transit. A supervisor and a manager are the two easiest people to reach. Why? Because they have company-issued phones. There's no reason why a Dan should be untimely to a supervisor or a manager when you have their home phone, you have their work location, you have their job phone, and they have to sign in with a superintendent somewhere down the line. But... What you have to realize here, it don't matter what color, it don't matter what nationality, it don't, all, all, all skin folk ain't kin folk. It doesn't matter what, what you are. You have people who's going to uphold the status quo by any means necessary. And 
Kim Moore Ward is, is, is a part of that. I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in her. I really thought that she would be different when she came here. You know, she's a lawyer. Um, not saying that that means anything, but there is a practice, a discriminatory practice where management is covered and protected, especially if you're in the in crowd. But if you're on the rank and file, you will be served the Dan. But we're going to work this situation out because men lie, women lie, videos don't. It's, it's clear. It's a video. It's a video. It's clear as day. Well, the audio is clear as day. But we are not going to let management push us around. I'm definitely not going to let management push me around. I don't care. They are going to respect this workforce. And for those who's just tuning in to what's going on. Management, Pat Foy, had said that they are planning on freezing our wages for the next four years. Permanently. No retro, no nothing. Permanently. If that is not alarming to you guys about what management really think about us, they talking about freezing our wages when they got all these consultants walking around, when they got all these contractors walking around doing half work, when they got all these, these managers that they bringing in from all over the world who don't know our job, making these, these very absorbent salaries, exorbitant salaries. But they want to take it from us or for our backs. And our union isn't saying anything. Tony Utano is talking about mask and $100 fines. All because they can't get the money, the $12 billion. They want to tax us. They not even looking at themselves. This company has to be one of the worst companies in the world when it comes to management. One of the worst companies in the world. When it comes to transportation. The only reason they don't get away with the stuff they really want to do is because this is a liberal state. I'm telling you guys, it's, it's, it's getting real scary out here. And we don't have the proper representation. We don't have the representation politically. We don't have... The representation when it comes to discipline and fighting back management on the day-to-day -day stuff that they do to us. We are literally on our own. This is not the time to be shucking and jiving and 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 getting hype off of words and no action. We need action. The MTA is looking to strip us of everything. That we ever fought for in this union. Wages. Healthcare. And I'm not letting them get the pension thing by me. They want to defer our pension payments. They saying that they will have to pay it back. But once they start playing with our pension payments. It may be a permanent thing. We can't forget who's up in Albany. And who gave us tier six. Cuomo, we cannot allow this to happen. So upset. We, we, you guys really got to watch to start watching these MTA. All this was said during the MTA board meeting today. Every single thing that I talked about was talked about during the MTA board meeting today. When I go live on Progressive Action TV, I'm going to actually play the video so you guys can hear for yourself of what's going on. We are in trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody have our back. We seen it. Um, I seen it for the past seven years that I've been here. We seen it during COVID. The deaths. Nobody having our back. A whole bunch of finger pointing. 
The union went MIA on us. It was workers like Jocelyn who came up with the the the, the bus part. It was the it was the workers, the everyday workers, who came. And, and put the ideas out there in the atmosphere on social media and stuff. It was not the union. You know what the union agreed to? A shower curtain. When we had over 100 deaths, a shower curtain is protection. Like the virus is going to say, hey, there's a shower curtain here. Do not go. Oh, don't, we, we are not to go under or we are not to go over the shower curtain. We cannot be afraid to protect us and our families this is what it comes down to we cannot continue to allow them to lie to us you get sick from from this disease you may not make it we 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 if the union if our union reps don't want to do anything then we have to take action we have to take action and we've been working on a few things preparing these actions because I refuse to work unsafe. I refuse to give to, to, to work unsafe. We, we, we must, we must control our destiny because the MTA planning on destroying us from every angle possible. And that's from, uh, uh, uh um, collective bargaining standpoint that's from a day-to-day -day dealing with management standpoint we must take a stand we must take a stand now today at six o'clock it was so important that i had to stop doing what i was doing to address you guys with this with this matter is very important today at six o'clock we will be having um our covid candle light Memorial you for all the co-workers who died because of COVID-19 here. We will be meeting with some of the families. We, we, we will have a stage set up. We will, um, the street will be cut off for us. This will be at 2 Broadway at 6 p.m. Please be there. We are giving plaques to every single um, family member um, so they could take home and let them know that we cared for them. They would not be forgotten. This was done by the rank and file members, not by the MTA, not by Local 100. This was the rank and file members. We spend more time with our co-workers than we do our own family sometimes. So it was only right that we do this. So today at 6 p.m., I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Please have your mask. If you don't have a mask, we will have masks. For you guys and gloves and hand sanitizer, um, social distancing will be observed. And we just, we just, we just go do what we have to do today. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.